In this video, we're going to have a look at the main components of what makes a modern remote control helicopter fly. This transmitter is what they call a Mode 2 radio. On the left hand side, you have the collector or pitch, as well as the rudder. On the right is the cyclic. So this tilts the helicopter forward or backward and also rolls it left or right. I have two switches set up on my radio. This is the run switch, which turns the motor on or off. And this is my flight mode switch, which switches between the flight modes or banks. I might have one bank for hovering and another for aerobatics. Let's put a battery in and see how this all works. When you plug the battery in, one of the first things to power up is your BEC or battery elimination circuit. This takes power from the battery, converts it to a usable range and sends it to the back of the helicopter where it powers up the receiver. The receiver is then able to connect to your transmitter. The receiver now has power to distribute to the servos and also send back to your electronic speed controller or ESC, which runs the motor. Let's have a look at the drive system. The electronic speed controller drives the motor. The motor has a pinion which then drives the larger main gear. The main gear is connected to the main shaft which then drives the head. Underneath the main gear is a pulley that has a belt that goes to the back that drives the tail. Not all helicopters just use a pinion and a main gear. Some have belts and others have multi-stage gearboxes. Let's have a look at the control system next. So this is what they call a swash blade. It's got two halves, a lower and an upper. And what it's designed to do is translate control changes from underneath the swash, the non-rotating part, into the upper swash or the rotating part in the head. So the lower half of the swash does not rotate and the upper half does. So if we look at the pitch first, as we raise the collective, these servos move the swash blade up. As the swash blade moves up, these push rods are connected to the blade grip arms. This increases the pitch on the blade. Lowering the collective lowers the swash blade and also reduces pitch on the blades. For the cyclic, which controls the disc, moving the stick forward will move the swash plate forward. Back on the back, swash plate to the right, and swash plate to the left. The tail works slightly differently in that there's a tail servo on the frame here. This moves this push rod over here which goes to the tail, for left and for right. As the pushrod moves, it changes the amount of pitch on the tail blades. This rotates the helicopter around its main shaft. The flight controller or flybarless system is an electronic gyro that is designed to stabilize the helicopter against wind, turbulence and aerodynamic instability. It also manages how responsive the helicopter is to control inputs and controls the servos. For example, collective is a single channel from the radio to receiver, but it actually moves three servos during pitch changes. The left and right servo here and here, and also the rear servo here. In this case, the receiver and flight controller are on a single unit, but often are two separate cases. In conclusion, remote control helicopters are getting easier to build and fly all the time. From the removal of the flybarless to direct to swash servos and electronics that are getting more reliable and more intuitive all the time. There's never been a better time to build and fly model helicopters. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more future videos, hit the subscribe button down below. Until next time.